Welcome to the Interesting Podcast with Jedi Brian, number 17. Uh, this is a special episode with uh, writer, director, other errs, Chris Foster. Now, Chris uh, wrote and directed the movie that I've been talking about for the last you know year and a half. It's called Tethered. Um, this past weekend, we had our world premiere, which was amazing. Um, we talk about that. Uh, thoroughly in this and what went into making this movie. If you've ever wanted to make a movie or get into stuff like that, uh, this is a great podcast to listen to because he breaks down from like early conception of the idea all the way to the red carpet premiere. Uh, there's red carpet photographers, like press interviews. It was nuts. Um, but Chris is Chris is one of the best, uh, most talented people I've ever met, and I, it was such an honor to work with him on this movie. Um, I will be forever grateful uh, for everything he's done, uh, for everything. Like, I, I can't wait for you guys to see the movie. Um, there's going to be a showing in Virginia, um, I believe on the 21st, and then there's talks of there being one in Naples. I believe there's going to be one in Pennsylvania as well. Um, definitely look up uh, tetheredthemovie.org for more information, um, tethered on Facebook, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, no, th this is a this is a great one. Um, I think you guys are really, really gonna dig it. Um, so I'm I'm not gonna keep you long here. Um, everybody enjoy my excessive ums in this intro, as well as this episode, episode 17 of the interesting podcast with writer director Chris Foster. And boop. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Yeah. Can you not flip it under switch under tape? I don't think so. I'll I, just I feel like it'd be way harder to switch. Yeah, that's a good point. Especially if you like tee it. Yeah. That could work. It does stick out a lot. It does. You gotta make sure it's on. Is yours on? Yours are heavy though. Is yours on? Testing, testing. Yeah, for sure. All right, cool. We started already. See, oh. now, see, now that you told me that story, though, I'm going to keep it, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah. check it. Yes. Like, every five keep minutes, your like, finger. Okay, yeah. It's still on. That's very kind of you as a guest to yeah, of course. do that. Oh, boy. Dude, so you saw a movie. I saw a movie. That you co-starred in. Co-starred. I co-starred. Co like lead. I don't want to brag, but I'm number three on the poster. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> that's a pretty big deal. It's a huge deal. No, it, it it was a. I have two moments in my life so far that have happened that I consider them like the greatest moments of my life, where I had a borderline existential like experience. Uh, the first was when I won an award for the Cabbage Merchant. Mm, that's a good story. That is, yeah, that's that's a uh, change change my life. Cause I was, a, I mean, I grew up pretty pretty bad. I had not the greatest childhood. So to go from that, like, super, super bullied for, like, all my life to being on stage with people chanting. I mean, it was for a character, you know, but, but still, I take, a, I take a little bit of credit for it. That's why any actor or actress gets praised, though, is because they played a character really well. Yeah, so I did I, – that, that's, that's a good point. That is a good point. I'll take that. There you go. It is – dude, you should – I wish you could have been there. Jared, who you met yesterday, and Monique were both there, which is the craziest thing because Monique doesn't do cons with me. She's not really into it, or she's real busy. So they were there for... They were there just because they hadn't done one. So I was like, dude, you got to go to Supercon. It'd be cool. I'm competing. And she's like, okay, cool. We went, and it happened to be the one where, like, nobody got chanting. Nobody got my level of applause. It was just, oh, my God. Like, they went nuts. Nuts. The walls were shaking. There was so much applause for me. And then the fact that I had the, the frame of mind to get my award, walk off stage, and then... No, no, no. I got to do this. I walked back on stage, asked for the microphone, had everybody be quiet, and then just screamed my cabbages, and then... Dude, so that's that's top there. That's one of the greatest insane. moments of my life. Um, second would have been yesterday. And they came to that too. They did, they did. They're my lucky charms now. That's crazy. Yeah. No, last last night. I mean, dude, we were in a movie theater, 
and not like a you know like the guy said in the press thing. It's not a little like a uh, home theater or like a little dinner theater like in a neighborhood. No, no, it was in like a legit mall like area thing. It's an AMC, which is like one of the top theater systems ever. And we were right next to like Independence Day, and like we were in between Hollywood blockbusters. And we were in the movie. You made a movie that was in the mo- in the right up there with everybody else. So well, let's start it off right. Like bef- before you were going into it, how yes. were you feeling? Because like, I mean, I talked to you about how I felt. And yeah. I was like, the only word I could come up with was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. I was yeah. there, and we had the backdrop and like people taking pictures, and it was like super awesome. Red carpet, and, press, right. photographers. But the only thing that I could think of was, okay, this is all really cool. So far. All I've accomplished is I'm pretty good at making a movie premiere. Like, I'm right. pretty good at making a movie <laughs> premiere happen. For sure. Like, I have all the ingredients here to make it cool. Absolutely. Now, is this going to live up to the movie? The premiere, right? Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Is so the movie going to hold not, up? Yeah, so I'm not like – I don't have this feeling of like, yes, I did it. I made the movie. I have this feeling of like, what if I'm like a <laughs> fraud and this is about to just like the best eat appetizer me alive. ever? You don't want to. Hopefully, it doesn't ruin the meal. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I don't want to be a marketer. I want to be a filmmaker. That makes sense. So, that makes. I sense. mean, the only word I come up with is terrified. But how did you feel before? Terrified's a good word. Yeah. Terrified is a good word. I, I remember going up because I put unnecessary pressure on it, mm. and I will be. A, it's it's not fair to you. I'll be honest. I put it, but I didn't put it on you. I put it on myself. What I did was I have very low self confidence usually um and this is the first time i've acted in a big thing with a role with a name like one of the leads like you said you know i've done a ton of extra work i did theater in high school for like four years i did children's theater but like that's not this it's totally different so i didn't know if i could act you know and so i i walked up and i was like this this could make me or break me with my confidence because i walked up i was like what if i watch the movie and i'm not good in it you know, like, what if I can't act? I don't know. I have no previous things to look at and be like, no, I can do this. So you, you know? were kind of – see, we were looking at it two different ways. Yeah. You were looking at it as everyone else I think is talented. Everyone's fantastically talented. And even people who don't think that they're talented, you were like, you guys – I look up to you guys. You guys are amazing. Absolutely. And you didn't want to be the one guy who was like, oh, but if, like, everyone was so good, but it was this guy. Like, exactly. Right. Exactly. I, w- I thought – I mean, I already – I'm, and I still feel this way. I'm nowhere near as good as they are. They are – Dude, Danny, I will talk about Danny forever now because Danny was good on set. I mean, he was intense. You know, he's an intense guy. Yeah. But in that movie, he was next level. He doesn't even say anything in the back. And you're just like, that guy, just eminent, incredible. I knew Alex and Nathan were amazing because I've seen them work and they're just great. But I didn't know how I was. I know how they are. But yeah, no, I went up and I was like, this, if I'm bad, like maybe I just shouldn't do this. Yeah. So you're going in like... If I'm bad, then, you know, people will be happy and, like, they're happy that they made this movie. But, like, if I'm bad, how am I supposed to live this down? Yeah, it pro- I probably wouldn't have done any more acting, yeah. to be honest. Whereas yeah, I'm coming in it as I know that everyone did an incredible job. Right. But if people don't like it, everyone has a right and will blame me. And sure. it's completely justified. Yeah, the director. Right. <laughs> It's 100% justified to sure. blame me because I know that. Like, right. I totally understand that. I think that, like, if a movie is bad, it's their director's fault. But if it's good, then it's everyone's. For it's sure. not just the director. Right, right. So. That's intense. I to- <laughs> Like, I totally get that, you know? So right. I'm going in, like, please, just, like, please. Just be good. <laughs> please be good. Because I'm editing for months. Yeah. Dude. So I've seen the movie. You know, you guys are just seeing the movie for the first time. I've seen it hundreds of times you know i can't imagine so i'm like you know i've gone through so many like drafts of this is this even good anymore like sure how far away have i strayed from like the source material which like everyone loved everyone right. loved the script like which is great have i ruined the script like you know so it's sure. so many thoughts going through just like that it's like what if i didn't pick the right take like what if what right. if someone did something and they were like oh i did really good in this take and i didn't pick that take sure i thought about that yeah. I did, on the way up when I was telling him because everyone's like oh you're in a movie yeah I was like I hope it's good <laughs> yeah. that's what I would say I was like I hope it's good I haven't seen any of it right. I've seen the trailer trailer looked awesome right. I'm so excited uh, but yeah no same thing I was just like I hope it's good I hope it's good nothing against anything just you don't know 
because you have so much to work with. We did so many takes in some certain scenes, and how do you know what to do? And then you have your specific style of making a movie. You don't yeah. just like cookie cutter it. Yeah. You know, you don't like we made shot two, shot two goes in box two. You you have to create this thing that we worked forever on and. I've worked on like tiny little skits and stuff and I hate everything I've worked on cause I've seen it 50 million times, Right. you know? And, uh, dude, I can't imagine. I can't imagine you got the premiere and it was a legit premiere. Right. This wasn't like a rinky dink kind of, Oh, we're going to meet up and dress up in a movie theater. No, no, no. You had, you had interviews. We had photographers. We had a red carpet. Yeah. The backdrop with the logo. Like it was serious. Yeah. And I love how y- you going in expect, you didn't expect it to be a real movie theater or yeah. a real movie premiere because you said, Dude, I'm gonna be overdressed, but I don't care. It's I know, be awesome. but like, <laughs> I was like, no, you're not gonna be overdressed. Yeah. And you didn't know, like, nobody really knew anything. No, you wouldn't tell me. Remember, I, I was like, really what is the tell- red carpet? You're like, ah, you'll see. Yeah, I didn't really tell anyone what was going on. I basically just like told them when it was and what to wear. Sure. Um, I great. didn't tell anyone about like photographers, like interviews or anything. Yeah. So, um, I think <laughs> so. That we were all- completely unprepared. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it. I I really felt like it added to the experience because, like I said, like. At first, when I was thinking of the premiere and stuff, I was like, all right, you know, I'm going to – the point of this is to show the movie. I want to show you guys the movie. I want your friends and family to see the movie. Um, But then I was like, you know what? I want to do this right. I want, like, to almost pay back the cast and crew for for months spending every weekend on this film set, like – Sure. Which is ridiculous to do. So, like – I was like, no, I'm going to pump some more money into this and, like, make it legit. Like, even just the little details, like, interviews and, like, a red carpet. Like, yeah. little stuff like that. Press. Right. No, so it's crazy. It's like, you know, I feel like going that extra mile, just putting a little bit more money into it really, like, drove it over the top for people. They're like, holy For God, sure. insane. There were people... There were people walking out of other theaters. That I was getting... Uh, Alex was getting interviewed, and I was next to the guy doing the interviews. And some guys like I don't know I guess they're famous or something and like walked by and I was like oh yeah yeah people, that's people how legit were, it was yeah people Pe- were coming out of other movie theaters and they were actually like kind of angry at us yeah they were like who are these people like in my way to go right? see like the new Independence Day like I'm so For mad real. it was so funny because there was crowds there yeah. were crowds to see the movie yeah you had a crowd to see your movie yeah your first movie out the gate red carpet premieres in a movie theater at AMC. Dude. So, okay. So, we go from the premiere. We go from the premiere. The premiere was awesome. I loved the it premiere. Was super the fun. Amazing. Um, then we go into the theater. We go into the theater. So, let's hear it. What would you think? We go into the theater. Same. Same. Still, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Yeah. I had Nathan and Alex sitting behind me, so that was nice. Alex is like, hold my foot. I was like, hold my hair. <laughs> uh, Danny's in front of me, so the cast is all in this little corner. Good. Um, same thing. My feet's shaking. I was just like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Like, I hope this is good. I'm putting so much pressure on it. Yeah, you know, because I, I have so much of myself put onto it to where like this could break me, which is not it's not the best way to live. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. You know, you can't control. How I relate to that 100 percent. I mean, you know, r- when you're writing it, it's like, dude, I've I've put myself I've put experiences like I've put feelings. I have put like parts of myself into this thing. Right. So like, people this don't is like me. It. They don't like me. Right. Absolutely. So it's like so we're 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 where we're do you sin- go from there after that. You, cr- you cry. Like, yeah. <laughs> you cry. You like, throw up. You cry. <laughs> I don't like. It, you know. I don't like your movie. And it's like, you, when you put part of yourself in that, it's like, how can I make another movie? I'm gonna put more of myself right? in that movie, or I'm gonna not put anything in it. It's gonna be even worse. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I was expecting. I, the 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 other thing that I was like the the worst case scenario because nobody's gonna be like that movie sucked at a red carpet premiere, you know, unless they're like a super dick. Uh, I was nervous we're gonna be like, eh, it was okay. Eh, you're right. You know, I was like, I know what that means. I thought most people were going to say it was great. And then later on be like, that movie sucked. Right. I'd just be nice to you up front. And then be like, actually, yep. <laughs> I 100% expected that. It, so we're sitting there and then you came out and gave a little director speech thing. You know, thanks for coming. This is for you guys, whatever. Which I can't imagine how, hard, how fast your heart was beating. Yeah. Well, it was, <laughs> the thing was like, yeah, it was going through your head there. You wanted to introduce it. You had to have. Well, first of all, I talked to Bobby, and Bobby has been to a couple of movie premieres. He's worked on some, like, bigger things in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And I was like, like, tell me how this movie premiere goes, because <laughs> I don't know. How do you do this? You know? <laughs> For sure. And he was like, I was like, you know, does someone say something after the movie, or, like, like how does it work? Is there Q&A? He's like, yeah, the director or, you know, whoever, a producer, usually goes in front of the crowd and, like, introduces the movie. Right. So I was like, you know, I can do that. I wasn't, like, 
that worried about that specifically. I was worried about what people would think afterwards. Sure. Especially when you go up front and you're like, this I did this. Yeah, but when you take ownership of it right this out the gate. This is my face. This <laughs> is like. If you don't like the movie, this is who you blame. Right. <laughs> so sure. that's that's kind of how it went. So I went up and like, I felt like I, I wasn't sure about this because I didn't ask the rest of the crew or the cast, but I felt like we all wanted to make sure that like our families and friends knew how much we appreciated them supporting us when we're in this ridiculously stupid industry. Sure. You sure. Know? I mean, we're playing pretend in front of cameras. Exactly. <laughs> so I wanted to like kind of like dedicate it to them in a way, which is cool. Yeah. Which and I think cool. that like the special thanks at the end kind of s- brought that. Oh man. Full circle. My parents freaked out. Yeah. Cause I didn't tell them. I'm just like, Oh, what's up there? <laughs> oh, got it. We're okay. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, my parents, uh, my mom specifically, she yeah. came out like teary eyed. She's like, Oh my God, I didn't realize this. Gonna be. I was like, it's for you, Ma. Thanks. That's awesome. She's, she couldn't believe it. Uh, but that's after the premiere. All right, all right. Yeah, it's during, after the premiere. During, no, no, now during we're at the movie. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll yeah. get there. All right, so the movie. What's going through your head? You made a movie, and people are reacting to it. Yeah. Well, my what I love is when you know the movie starts going, and then you start seeing the characters start getting introduced, and like people start cheering when they right. see each person on the screen. Like, woo, Brian! Or like, right. Josh. I love that. That was cool. <laughs> um, it felt... Um, it felt like a show right. rather than a movie, like sure. an interactive kind of thing, which I really liked. Um, I loved when, like, any time the crowd reacted in any way to the movie and you could hear them, it was, like, the best thing ever. Sure. There were um, a lot of laughs. Yeah. People laughed throughout it. I mean, I've shown the movie to, like, the only people who I've shown the movie to are people who are somehow involved in the movie. Sure. Um, make sure my mic's on. I know. People who are still <laughs> uh, involved with the movie. So... I never got just someone coming to see a movie for entertainment. Right. Um, granted, it was like family too, but I felt like I could get a more genuine reaction from them. Sure, than, sure. Uh, They're people. not going to sugarcoat it as much. Right. Sure. So that was really encouraging when I heard that kind of stuff. But right off the Batman, I was like slouched down in my chair. I was like, dude. <laughs> what if this movie starts and everyone hates it? What if this movie starts and like the Blu-ray explodes? Like <laughs> every <laughs> single <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. At the beginning, I was like, ev- like what could go wrong right now? Everything was going through my head. The sure. Whole, like, and, and then you know, five ten minutes in, when people start like reacting positively, then I kind of like settled down a little bit. But sure. Then you just watch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what like watching my movie with other people was like one of the most terrifying things I've ever done. Easy. I can imagine. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work you put into something. You're like, Hey, l- please love this. Yeah. <laughs> so like when you came on screen for the first time, you're in, you know, the first 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. What was going through your head? Uh, what was going through my head? Um, I was wondering which take you were going to use. Mm. Cause we did a couple takes right through the card. Right. You know? And then I'm also really, I'm not a big fan of my voice mm-hmm. a lot of times, especially on camera. And I was like, what if I just, what if I hate the sound of my voice? And I actually liked it. Like it was done really well. And, um, it was cool. I mean, I don't want to sound narcissistic about it, but it looked really cool. No, I, I like, mean, like I'm in a car, I'm in a car. I say, could have just thrown it to me. And the read was good. Like I delivered the line. Well, right. The shot was really cool. Like, well, uh, it felt pretty great. Yeah. Not did lie. you see the character in yourself while you were watching it? Or did you just see Brian? I saw the character almost the whole way. Yeah. There were a couple things. Uh, that took you out of that it. were me that yeah. I was just like, oh, okay, that's strange. Usually like when I'm not saying anything, mm. you know, like most of the time I'm reacting as Q and it was good, but there's one specific time, which I'm not going to say, yeah. uh, that I was like, all right, well that's me right there. Yeah. You know, I well, didn't realize can, the camera was on me. That's a good thing to work on though. I yeah. think that's like, absolutely. That's an interesting thing to have to work on absolutely. because you know, when you're listening to, to other people's dialogue, you're just listening to them talk and exactly. you don't know what you're doing. You're exactly. Not thinking like, Oh, what should I be doing right now? You're just listening to people talk, which is how you do. What happened? Yeah. yeah. That's what you do in real life. You just listen to people talk. That's how you look. For so real. That's like one thing yeah. that is ho- probably pretty hard to work on. It's but very hard. But yeah. now I know because I'm aware of it. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, there was, there was only one shot in the whole movie where I was like, all right, well, that's me. Mm-hmm. Um, the rest of it was Q. And yeah. and it, I, that was one of the best things that helped me uh, confidence wise is I watched the movie and I saw Q. You know, I was like, no, I can, I can do, I can actually do this. Right. Because that was another thing I was nervous about. I was like, what if it's just me on screen? And because p- people don't know me, mm-hmm. so they'll be like, oh, okay, well, he did a good job. And I'm like, I didn't. That's just me up there. Right. But it really was like different. Like I'm not 
Q, I will say I put a lot of myself into Q, but I will say Q is very different to me. I'm way more expressive and out there and, you know, yeah, different. Q is a different person. Um, so that was, that was, that was cool to see that I, as the movie went on, I got more comfortable and confident. I was like, I can actually do this. Yeah. Cause I didn't know until that moment. Yeah. You know, but, uh. It was cool. So was there no parts where you were, like, cringing? Were there no cringe moments? <sighs> um. That's impressive that you have to think about it. Yeah. Cringe, where, like, parts that I just did not like, well, like about myself. Yeah, like, you're watching yourself, and you're like, oh, why did I do that? Or, yeah. like, oh, jeez, what am I doing? Um. No. That's awesome. No, not really. I thought I did pretty well. That's awesome. Like, I can I can confidently say I thought I did a pretty good job. Yeah. I mean, I tried really hard the yeah. whole time, you know? And, the I mean, people's reactions to you, that, obviously. That actually may have been the biggest factor in helping me. Like, they laughed a lot. Because yeah. when I'm filming it, like, I didn't laugh. Yeah. You know, I was like, it's kind of fun. I've laughed in between takes with Nathan, just kidding around. Yeah. Uh, so you don't know the dialogue's funny until you watch it again. And then even then, like, you can laugh. doesn't mean it's funny. Right. Because I was in it. I've got the context. Uh. But no, everyone loved Q. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know? They and loved... No, actually, I can't talk about that. But, yeah, right. Yeah, we can't, but, we can't um, do super spoilery. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, be as, a, be as a ambiguous as you can. Try This is director training. Part, okay, there's one part <laughs> in a scene where something bad is happening to you. Uh-huh. I'm following you. And then the character who is doing something bad to you is then is it a line or is it an action it's an action okay so i know what you're talking about so like something then happens to that character and people are happy because they like yes you know someone was doing wrong to you and, and then, then i when got that some. guy got his then it's like people were actually like cheering for that yes that's how much they were like invested in your character yeah i said i know what you mean now. yeah yeah no that was good that was very good that's crazy i know like <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't believe it, man. Because it, it's a totally different experience than cosplaying. Yeah. Totally different. Because when when I'm cosplaying and I get the cabbage merchant, I have a reputation as a cabbage merchant. And I sound like a dick when I say it. And I don't like saying it, but facts are facts. Um, even when I'm not the cabbage merchant, I'm at a premiere of a movie I'm in and people bring up the cabbage merchant. Like, there's something in the water, you yeah. know? Um, that is totally different than this. Mm -hmm. Because the cabbage merchant, if you make a good costume, and you embody the character somewhat, like, people love it. They're not necessarily loving you. They love that you're bringing their character to life. Right. It's the same reason, like, when you go to Disney and you see a Disney princess or you see Gaston, you love it. You yeah. don't see those people. Yeah. You're like, oh, I love Gaston, and they, they did a good job bringing Gaston to me. Right. You know, but I feel like they, it was totally different with this because I wasn't bringing something pre-existing. I wasn't playing the nostalgia tune. Right. To them. I wasn't showing them something they already like. Right. You know? Because that's the thing with cosplay. People love costumes that they recognize. That's why people get a reputation. Because, like, I know that person and I really like it, so I like you for bringing that to me. Mm -hmm. Whereas with this, Q's a totally different character. He's not in any other movies. You brought him to life. You created this character. And people liked him. And I played that guy. You know? So it's like people enjoyed. I take credit. Yeah. I guess is the difference. Yeah. I take credit for Q. I don't take credit for his dialogue. Half, uh, I mean, a third of that movie, I will honestly say, maybe a third of my lines were improv mm -hmm. in the movie. The rest of it, dude, you wrote it. And I improv your lines. Yeah. You know, so cosplaying, I don't take credit for things because it's already there and I'm bringing it to you. This felt different and felt better. It was totally different with the reactions from people. You know what the difference you is know, between that? cosplaying and acting? It's that... When people are seeing your character, they have someone else created their emotional reaction to that character. There, someone created uh, their right. emotional reaction to the ca cabbage merchant. You created the emotional reaction to Q. God, that makes sense. Because I, when I write it, it's just words on a piece of paper. True. If I was acting it out, no one would care. Like everyone would be like, "This is a loser," you know. <laughs> but like, you are creating that emotional emotional connection between the page into you and then into the into right. the audience. That makes sense. There's no nostalgia bank that you're going off of. Right. You're creating and, something from scratch. And so those reactions are genuine. Right. You know, which is pretty, which is pretty cool. You're 
you're creating a character that someone else could imitate at some point because sure you like disney walt disney started the emotional connection for mickey mouse right so now tens and thousands of other people can now use mickey in their movies use and then it but it's walt disney that's true because they're here. banking on the fact that you love mickey already and then that makes sense exactly that's pretty cool yeah pretty it was smart. it was very exciting People reacted, man. That's the big thing because I've never watched something like that, like shown people something that we worked on and then have them genuinely feel. Yeah. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah. That what was, was the difference between going to see Tethered and going to see Star Wars Force Awakens? Um, I was skeptical of myself seeing Tethered. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Force Awakens was a, was a different experience for me because I know a lot about Star Wars. Yeah. Like, I don't want to break, but I know a lot about Star Wars. More than I know about pretty much anything else. Mm. Um, and when they have what's called the Expanded Universe, which was everything outside of the six movies, and so there's books and comics and, like, 20-some years' worth of content. And when Disney bought Lucasfilm, they scrapped all of that. They're like, all those stories that you know are not true anymore mm -hmm. because we accepted them as fact. Um, now they're not. So going into episode seven, I was like, what are they going to tell me happened? Because I know what happened. I read the books. I've read the comics. I know what happens. But now I don't because they scrapped it. I was like, what is their version of what happened? Right. So I was very um, underwhelmed at first. When I went to the midnight premiere, I actually didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And then I watched it twice. I watched it at 7 p.m. on Thursday and then again at uh, 11. Mm-hmm. The first time I saw it, I was just so overwhelmed, and I'm trying to dissect every single frame. Like, what is that? I haven't yeah. seen that before. You know, it's new Star Wars, which is new to me, because yeah. I know a lot. Um, and then I have this preconceived notion of what I thought happened, and this is like, no, here's what happened. Um, so the first time I saw it, I actually didn't like it. The second time I saw it, I liked it much better, mm -hmm. because it kind of like had said it. it hit me in the face. Was like, this is new, and I'm like, okay, I, I see what you did here. Right. Um, now I really like it. I really like it. It's not my favorite, like, by far. But seven's good. I love the characters. I love Ray, Finn, and Poe. Like, absolutely adore all three of them. They're fantastic. Um, I still had my hang-ups with it. So you were underwhelmed going in it at first? Very underwhelmed after but the, the first, first time. the first time you saw Tethered, you were overwhelmed? Cor absolutely. Yeah. Because I, I didn't know... That I didn't have preconceived notions walking into Not comparing into the two movies, but like for sure the emotional the, connection yeah, that you have with each movie. Absolutely, because in Star Wars, I knew what happened, yeah. or I thought I knew what happened, and they were telling me what you knew was wrong. Here's what really happened. Um, hence why I still have some hangups. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, but tethered, I had no idea what to expect. I didn't know what was coming on, and I was just like, "Please be good," right. you know. Where uh, Episode Seven, I was like, "Oh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great." So I had. I had no expectations for tethered. I had all the expe all the expectations were on me. Mm. I was like, I hope I'm good, right? Because I could suck and it will ruin me if I am. Right. You know, it wasn't even like the movie could be great, mm -hmm. but if I sucked in it, it it would have ruined the whole thing for me. Right. You know, but I felt like I did pretty all right. Yeah. You know, and people liked it. That was the that was the other big thing because I probably still would have poked holes in myself. Right. Uh, if people hadn't loved him so much. Yeah. If you didn't get the reaction from the crowd during the movie. Yeah, and not that I needed it, right. but just that – because I didn't think anyone was going to like me, you know? So when I got it, it was like this extra thing that not only did I expect, but like I didn't know how to handle, Yeah. you know? Um, so we'll go to after the movie. Okay. So you walk out of the movie. You walk out of the movie. Well, I walk out of the movie. <laughs> First of all, the First of all, after the movie ended, the, the credits rolled and the uh, – Movie started playing again. It did. It was on repeat. <laughs> so I had they to heard your plea for encore. <laughs> yeah, so I had to get out of the uh, theater pretty quickly and go tell the manager to turn the movie off. Right. Um, or else people probably would have stayed in there for oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe another 30 minutes. Um, so, uh, yeah, I rush out of there and, and talk to the manager and just, like, start talking to people. But you walk out, and it's, like, a mob <laughs> coming at you. Uh, there was a couple people. And it's, like, I mean – that's completely different from anything else that you've gotten, like getting recognized and stuff like that. Like, oh, this for is sure. This was work that I put in to a character, watching a movie. People watch the movie. They like the movie so much. I heard, God, it feels so bad. Like, be like, oh, yeah, people liked me. Like, it doesn't feel right it to say. It doesn't sound bad. It's your um, first movie, dude. I had probably 15 people come out to me. They're like, Q is my favorite character. Like, it hands down. And then I had, like, a... 
Uh, there were a couple girls that were really, really nice. They were fans of Josh. Mm-hmm. Like, they know his YouTube stuff. Josh Cummins. Correct. Josh Cummins, who's the best. Mm-hmm. And Australian. Plays Johnny and Tethered. Plays Johnny and Tethered, <laughs> who's also Australian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they were there supporting him, which was really, really cool. Um, but they rushed over me, like, can we please get a picture with you? You're my favorite character and everything. And I was like, Josh! <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, they were super, super nice, crazy supportive. People liked him. Like, that was something I was not prepared for at all. Because mm-hmm. I thought they'd be like, oh, was good, that was a good movie. They really liked it. I didn't expect them to be like, Q was good. Yeah. You know? I don't know. It's weird. He just stood out. He like, was cool. Watching, I, I never, you know, no character re- or actor really stood out to me while I was editing. Sure. Going through it. Because you've seen all the takes. Dozens, <laughs> dozens, dozens <laughs> you've times. seen them do bad takes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so when I, the first time I was sitting in the theater, I was like, Every actor, like, really has their moment where they're, like, they top it. They top everyone. Right. And then no one was ever, like, there was no moments where I was, like, oh, that actor did bad. Right. There's no, like, bad um, interactions from the audience or anything like that. Sure, sure. So, like, one of the things that helped me the most, too, was when people were laughing at you. Right, You know, right. that, like, really reassured me. Because, like, when you're making a movie, the whole point of making a movie is to go through, to have people go through emotions. For sure. Any emotion. If you're sad, if you're angry, any emotion is good. You just want people to feel. Right. For sure. So, when pe- you know, when there's people laughing or when someone gets killed, like, people are excited or, like, terrified or, sure. or disappointed. Like, I like that. Um, so when people were, you know, showing emotions towards whenever you gave a piece of dialogue that was funny, right. like, that really like reassured me too. Sure. I was like, okay, get, I'm glad I used that. I'm glad like for sure I Ooh, put that, that one edit works. There and yeah. Right, because you had a lot to work with. Yes. Especially by the pool. Yes. <laughs> I, Especially me, by the pool. Me and Nathan still talk about that when you're like, all right, we did like three takes of it straight on, like with the dialogue, and then you're like, ah, improv for a little bit. And we, like, delivered the first two lines, and then we did, like, six and a half minutes of just improv, and then brought it back to the last line and wrapped the scene up. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, That's I definitely want to do something with, like, deleted scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, not, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, not scenes wh- that I didn't like, because scenes I didn't like, I took out for a reason. For sure. And I don't want anyone to ever see them. Right. <laughs> but when it comes to, like, you know, um, improv or, like, extended scenes, I definitely want stuff like that. That would be funny. I Just a bunch of different lines me. between yeah. me and Nathan. Like, yeah. The turtle? Really? Why the turtle? <laughs> There's a whole, like, minute on the turtle. Yeah. That was good. There's an inflatable turtle in the scene. Yeah, there's an inflatable turtle Yeah. for the pool. And uh, it has a name. We won't say his name. You'll find out the name <laughs> when you buy the movie. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you s- you saw the movie, you went and had it shut off, you come back, people are coming out. What happens? Well, people are coming out, um, and it's just people coming up to me, and like it's it's a lot of parents coming up to me and just loving it. Sure. Um, and that was it, it. Was everyone in that audience specifically, which was like the cast and crew, and then the friends and family of the cast and crew. Sure. That's like the audience that was sure. there. So. I needed them to like it. Like, sure, these coming, are the people you like, made they it for. Know, yeah, they know like what their son or daughter went through to make this movie. They don't really know, but like, they, they don't know spoilers, idea. but they know there's a lot of work that they put in. Right. It's like when the kid brings home a finger painting to the parents. Right. You're like, I love it. It's on the fridge. You exactly. Know? Sure. So, for them to just like it as a movie and not as like, yeah, my kid was in that. That's pretty cool. Sure. It's like people to actually like the movie and people who would wanna tell their friends about it like you have to watch this movie right it's like that really meant a lot to me just people telling me that like i did a great job and i'm like um like your kid (laughs) made it happen so don't thank me for sure um that was like the best though that was good that was good we had interviews we did things we did some interviews that was good did you uh did you get any fun questions on your interview um did you get a lot of what's going through your head? I, he movie. asked me if I was single. That was did he? The, that was pretty funny. Oh, I didn't get that. Uh, oh, that's lame. Maybe you saw it. Maybe yeah, you saw he, it with he this probably girlfriend. saw Monique. Yeah, yeah. In that case, good on you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he asked Nathan if he was single. <laughs> I know. I just, I really want to see those interviews. I haven't seen him yet. The Sizzler looked real good. Yeah, it did. 
It, it looks real good. You're gonna be. <laughs> there's a lot of me. Like I don't even know where I am. <laughs> yeah. I, I need to get. I need to get better at interviews. I can't wait to put that stuff out. I'm good at interviews that like I run. Right. Kind of. I still ramble, but. You don't really interview though. You just like talk. You're just good yeah, at talking. Yeah. I like talking to people. Yeah. I like people. Yeah. Usually. <laughs> usually. Usually. If they like you. I like people that I choose to talk to. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I'm the same way. I like people who are nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> those are the best kinds of people. Yeah. That's what I hear. Yeah. When are those going to be out? Do we know? Um, whenever Soon? the guy sends me over some stuff, I'm going to send him some behind the scenes videos. Uh, oh, that'll be cool. To throw over it or do whatever he wants with it. I don't know what he's going to do with it. Sure. Um, but he's really good with like interviews and editing stuff. So he's a videographer sure. too. So. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So. Um, Seems like a real cool dude. Yeah. Really nice. So you made a movie. Yeah. We're going to go all the way back now. Okay. Let's Kay. go all the way back. How long have you wanted to be a filmmaker? Uh, I never really wanted to be a filmmaker. I just like started being a filmmaker. Oh yeah, I just picked up a camera like yeah. I'm gonna make a movie. Yeah, I I don't think that I've ever been like an aspiring filmmaker. I've always just like been a filmmaker. Like sure. How do you know? Like, what's an aspiring filmmaker? Are you like you never made anything, but you would like to? So you call yourself an aspiring filmmaker, or like you've made some stuff, but you don't consider yourself a filmmaker. So like. That is a great point I've never thought about. A lot of people say, like, I'm an aspiring musician or, like, and It's like, so you don't actually play, but right. you want to? So it doesn't huh. make a lot of sense. Um, people who make films and say they're aspiring filmmaker, they are a filmmaker. They're just not confident with themselves. Sure. Um, and I think to be a filmmaker, you need to be a little bit ignorant anyways. Sure. And be like, pfft. I can make a movie. Yeah, like, right? Yeah. <laughs> how hard can it be? Like, you have to do that or you're just not going to make it. For sure. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I think, I, like, I've been making little movies with my friends since I was maybe, like, 12, I want to say. Yeah. Like, middle school. Cool. I don't know how old I was in middle school. Probably about 12. 12. I think it's, like, 11 to 13. Yeah, so let's school. say 12. Sure. Um, Good su- little sweet spot in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, be Seventh cool. grade, roughly. Yeah, somewhere around there. I hear you. Um... And it just like kept going and going until until you find yourself at AMC yeah. for the movie yeah. premiere. <laughs> <laughs> I was making you know little narrative stuff, and then it eventually escalated rapidly. Um, Very. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. So, when did you realize you wanted to make a feature? You make a bunch of little stuff. Uh, like I said, I saw your stuff you worked on before, like uh, the Sanibel video for YouTube, like just real cinematic things. Yeah. But when were you like, I'm gonna make a legit movie, and then you're like, I'm gonna make a feature. Yeah. Because people dip their toes in like, I'm going to make a short film, make a couple of those, and then maybe one day make a feature. Who knows? Right. But you're like, nah, I'm going out. Well, I think that there was there was a realization at some point. Mm-hmm. It was, I was making short films, and I was like, you know, I want to do this for a living, but I, I can't make a living making short films unless you're sure. like Film Riot or you make a you do something weird with it unless you have a company backing you via right. youtube yeah, right. yeah absolutely so i was like the next step is obviously to make a feature if i want to do this for the rest of my life this is probably just the next logical step yeah this is probably like 11th grade in high school um and i was like i just started writing stuff um just anything yeah try to try to write a feature Try and get, like, 90 pages of story. Sure. That was really hard. Well, yeah. Because I would get 30 pages, and I'd be like, this is an entire movie, but I only have 30 pages. What's going on? Like, I just right. didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so I just kept going and going and going um, until I finally found one that I was like, I can film this. Um, and I guess that's kind of where it, where it came from. I was like, well, it's time to go. Gotcha. So you realized you wanted to be a filmmaker right. for a living. Right. The only way to do that is to have a movie. Yeah. So and I, and I had the the option to go to full sale. Me too. Right? I got in. Yeah. Then like you got twenty three grand per semester. Yeah. It's like nope. They're like get out. Yep. <laughs> and I was gonna do the scholarship and stuff. Um, like, I looked at the past scholarship winners and I was like, I could win like seventeen of these awards. Like, sure. This is like pathetic these other awards sure no offense to any full sale people listening yeah. to this but you guys suck no 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 i'm just kidding <laughs> but um, um you're only catering to the rich <laughs> but um uh i think like i read uh i read robert rodriguez's 10 minute film school at the end of his book uh the uh, rebel, rebel without, without a crew. crew yep and i was like 
he's like, this is how you make a movie. You go get a camera, you like figure out a way to edit it, you get some actors, and you like make the movie. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh. It's so simple. <laughs> and then I called Full Sail, my Full Sail rapper, whoever. whoever yeah, your uh, admissions yeah. representative. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, Mine, mine so was named Patrick. Mine was named like something with an S. I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, she didn't acknowledge me. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was like, I called her and I was like, so I'm going to come out of school. You know, it was a two-year degree. It was uh-huh. a four-year and two-year degree. Yep, they have accelerated graduation programs. And I was like, I'm all for it. I didn't even know that college had a, summer break. A bachelor's in 21 months. Yeah. Yeah, it's insane. I didn't realize that college had summer breaks at all. Oh, yeah. I was like. It's like school. I was like, public school? I was like, I didn't realize Yeah, right? That. You ain't got time um, for that. You're in college. Yeah, so I was like, um, two years, it sounds great. I mean, let's do it. Um, doing all the math, like, I'll be at this age when I can graduate, and it'll be awesome. I did the same thing in yeah. high school. I was like, if I do this, I'll graduate by this. I'll be famous by 23. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, I called her up, and I was like, so I'm going to come out of school with a feature, right? You know, I'll have a feature under my belt. I'll be able to, like, show that as my reel or whatever, like my calling card. And she was like, um, no, but <laughs> the whole class writes a feature f- feature length script and then the professor picks one and then the professor chooses who directs, who does cinematography. He assigns everyone a role for that movie and then you make a feature film. So I was like, it's a group project, right? So there's a potential that I'm going to go through school and at the end I would be holding the lights for someone else's feature that they made and be 75 grand in debt correct <laughs> and i'd get a piece of paper at the end yep and she was basically like, yeah so i was like okay not gonna do this anymore <laughs> i mean i had my seat ready like i had money down on it like ditto i was i was i was actually about to sign my apartment my yep. apartment papers. I was like ready to go. Yep. So I was like, I'm not gonna do this. I'm just gonna I'm gonna take one I'm gonna take one percent of that money and make a movie with it. Um and that's that's where it happened. I was like, I, I there's no other way to go. You know, there's sure make a feature or go to film school and try to find a job after that. Sure. Which even that's not guaranteed. Nope. That's the thing. People think it is, but it's not. Cause that's the other thing that I've learned specifically in entertainment. Like nobody cares what your degree is. It's like, not okay, only that, like you but need people don't like it. you. If you have a degree, yeah. people are like full sale grads. Like you guys think, you know, everything It's really annoying when you're on set. I'm like, I'm so glad I I've, go. I've heard that on set from some people. They're like, he has full sale degree. He doesn't know anything, which is crazy. Like, you know what? I'll give him this. This is what full sale has. They have the best equipment. Dude, their their back lot. They have. <gasps> you cannot touch full sales equipment. They have no. like if a new camera comes out six months later, the classrooms are using it. Yep. You know that's like you cannot touch. So the only thing they have above somebody else is when they get to a brand new set, they know how to use the cameras where the new guys don't. Right. You know, like if a guy's been working there ten years, they get a new camera, he's still figuring it out. A full sale grad will know how to use that camera, which is cool. But if you're if you want to be a writer director, what good is that to you? It's absolutely someone else controls the camera, not you. Exactly. So, and and another thing that I think, and me and Dimitri kind of disagree on this, sure. But I look at it and I'm like, just because someone knows how to handle a camera doesn't mean they can write and direct. Just sure. how someone who can write and direct doesn't mean that they can do cinematography or True. editing True. or like every other job in the filmmaking someone can industry. write well but if they don't know what a good shot looks like forget about it exactly and that's and so you important someone else do that so like everyone has their role so when you think like i'm gonna be a pa and i'm gonna work my way to the top to be a writer director like it just doesn't make sense right it doesn't make logical sense if you want to be a writer director then write or direct if you want to be a cinematographer then make really cool shots you sure. know what i mean don't be an actor but like shoot really cool shots and people will want your really cool shots. Right. Right. It just, it seems really straightforward to me. Um, and there's some like disconnect with that. Sure. Through a lot of people and a lot of people don't really agree with that, but that's just the way I see it. Sure. Um, but like, who am I to say? I'm like a 20 year old dude who, who just just made a movie at AMC. Who's just like doing something. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but no, no, it absolutely. It also depends like, well, actually I want to go with this. So, how much did tethered? What was the what was the budget? How so much the did production cost was two thousand dollars. Okay. Um, Post production costs were more. I I'd, I'd have to go back and look at it because I'm well, sure. still spending stuff on it to sure. get theaters and to like 
you know, just from buying the t-shirts to sell. Yeah, like, absolutely. Merchandise, I mean, but right. roughly tethered costs two thousand dollars to make. Yes. So you're looking at that is crazy, if, crazy if cheap. I could have only spent two thousand dollars if I did the production and then edit it, then put it on Vimeo. It would have been two grand. That is amazing. Yeah. Like Plus two hundred for the Vimeo Pro. But sure. Yeah, yeah. But this is a movie with actors and a crew and a cat. Like, that's serious. Yeah. So how did you? Uh, so all right, beginning stages of the movie. You write your script. Mm-hmm. How long did it take you to write the script? Way too long. <laughs> it took a bit. I because I remember the draft that I originally got was not the one that we ended with. Right. So. I. I feel like throughout the whole thing, I was like always looking forward to the next step, but I wasn't enjoying the, the process of what I was doing at the moment. Sure. I was like trying to get ahead of myself, which is something, which is like a really valuable thing that I learned so that I can work on the next one and just enjoy what I'm doing. Because right. even right now, like I'm still, you know, I'm not editing the movie, but I'm editing like content to promote the movie. Right. And I'm like, man, I wish I was writing right now. But when I was writing, I was like, man, I wish I was shooting right now. Oh, I feel it's, you. Like, it's so <laughs> stupid. Like, you shouldn't think that. You should think, like, I love what I'm doing right now. Sure. I get to write a movie, and, and maybe people will watch it, which is really cool. Sure. So when you, I, that's a huge thing that I learned. But um, there was a point where I was like, all right, I want to get this movie cast and, like, ready to go. I have, you know, the characters down. I just don't have everything perfect yet, so I'm going to get the characters. Sure. Um. And what I didn't realize is, like, for actors to 100% want to sign on, they need to read a script. Yeah. Um, Preferably so a I, good one. Right. So <laughs> I gave them, like, the first – I gave you guys, like, the thir- first 30 pages, which yeah. I thought was – you know, it was a strong sh- – it was strong, but it wasn't, like, wh- how good it was going to be at the end. Sure, sure. Um, it's good enough to gauge interest right, for sure. Right. I read it, and I was like, this dude's awesome. Right. So it was kind of like a sample. You right, know? right. It was like a sample of this is kind of – what the field of the movie is and this is what your character is because first 10 minutes all the characters are introduced right so that really helps you guys as actors absolutely um so i mean all together it probably i there's so many versions of the script like you wouldn't even believe sure but like i want to say i want to say a year give or take okay um from very like first idea to finish finish script yeah and it ended up being like what like 98 pages something like that. it was a, 90 it was a something bit. pages yeah it was a bit it was 90, good 94 minute movie so somewhere around there it i i will say i mean since i did a, i did alibi boys it was the first thing i ever worked on that had like a production value and everything dimitri caspian it is unwatchably bad <laughs> like i'm not kidding yeah it's on youtube i do not recommend it my back is in i'm like oh it's me <laughs> But man, it's 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 bad. And it's they bad. get money to make that stuff. The bo- the ho- half of the crew was from Boston. They flew down here to film it. Isn't that direct- crazy? Like, right? So that was that was awful. And then I've done a couple other things that were just really really bad. Mm. And the script is so important. Yeah. It's so important because if you that's like the base level. If you have a bad script, it can look pretty, but it will still be a bad movie. Yeah. Uh, in most regards. Um, but the tether script was really really good. And something I'm super interested in is writing because that's the first idea. Yeah. So in that, you have your idea. Did you have the full idea of Tethered first? Or were you kind of making it up as the, you were writing the script? Well, going back on the point that you said before is like, I, I think that it's really interesting how it must be, like, I can't imagine trying to be an actor because you, I, I watch these short films and stuff. Like, this is a good example is I watched um, the way that I casted Josh was I saw one of the short films that he was in. Oh, okay. And I was like, this is not a great short film. For sure. lack of better words to say it. Sure. Um, and I was like, you know, if Josh got some good dialogue, he got a good character, he had some good direction, like, he could be a great actor. Sure. But, like, how is he supposed to do anything when he's given this crap on the page? Sure. There's nothing you can do with it. Like, you can make bad dialogue sound good, but, like, it's really hard. Oh, like, yeah. Heath Ledger could do that. Sure. Like, very few actors are able to do that. For sure. Um, so that's kind of, like, how I think that it was a benefit for you guys of, like, you're finally getting something good. You for know sure. What I mean? I'm forever thankful. Yeah. You're <laughs> you getting know. something good f- because you're good at acting, and now you have something good to act, and now it's going to be... 
perfect. beneficial for everybody. Exactly. For sure. For sure. Um, but what was your question? Wait, again? Wait, right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my life. I'm the same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you were when you came up with the idea and as you're writing it, did you know the ending? Like, did you have like this is what I want to do, and then just kind of fill in the blanks first, or did you kind of write a scene and then what would happen next and write it as you, make it up as you go? Yeah. So two different approaches. Since there were so many versions of the script, right? Um, there were a lot of di- you know I went through. I didn't go, just go through versions of the script. I went through versions of the outline. Oh, all right. So you straight up changed the story quite right. a few times. So, you know, I had like index cards taped all over my wall of like beat, beat, beat. This would happen. This would happen here. Pacing kind of stuff. Um, we meet this character at, on this page. Right. Um, so I, th- I, I think that really when the script came together is when I when I got um, introduced to Mike Mares, okay. who co-wrote the script with me. And that he really helped me like flesh out everything. He was like, he almost helped me g- get my structure under control. Oh, cool. Um, and, like, I mean, he crushed it, too. Like, he deserves as much admiration as, as I'm getting. Sure. Um, he just did a phenomenal job. And it's really, it, it sucks because it's really hard for me to remember exactly what I wrote and what he wrote. Sure. Because, I mean, I wrote draft, dra- like, six, seven drafts. Then I gave it to him. And then he read that draft and then wrote another script and then after that i went in and wrote like three more drafts so it's like sure it It was a collaboration right it's it's with a lot of um hollywood movies is like people do everyone puts in little stuff everywhere so like right you don't really know unless it's a solo writer then that you know you don't know what who put in what absolutely um but so, so actually on that how did you meet him where did you i met him through a guy in los angeles named seth Okay. And Mike also lives in, lives in LA. I think he still lives there, or somewhere in California. Mm-hmm. Um, and I haven't met him in person. I met him online, really? and we just like had phone calls. We had like just you know meetings all the time. Um, and he was just so awesome to work with. He was a fat. He was fast, and he was really good at like taking notes and having suggestions and ideas. Um, and I mean, he crushed it too, man. That's really awesome. Did. Yeah, that's awesome. Cause I when I, you know you see written by Chris Foster and Mike Mears yeah and I was like I don't know that person right <laughs> I know everyone on this thing but that's cool that's very cool yeah all right so you went uh you got a script script's done you don't live in Florida correct you filmed it in Florida yep how did you real how did you come to that like I'm going to film this in Florida while you're in Pennsylvania yeah so I just graduated high school in upstate New York mm-hmm. and. My parents had just gotten a vacation house in Florida that they rent out to people, and then they use it, you know, a couple weeks out of the year. Sure. Um, And in Florida, no one rents during the summer, or for the most part, it's really hard to get a renter in the summer. For sure. So no one's in the house. And I was like, hey, like, I'll go take care of the house for you. Right. You know, (laughs) uh, quote unquote, during the summer. (laughs) Um, while there's no renters. So they're like, okay, you know, do what you want. Like, no one's there. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I came down here. I was like, I'm going to have access to an entire set, quote unquote set. Sure. (laughs) Um, I can live in the quote unquote set. Sure. All the actors can. What better way can you do it to like bring down costs? Sure. Um, and that was kind of the idea of like where I put him on house arrest. It's like, all right, I have this house. That's all I have in Florida. All I have is one house. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know anyone. I don't have any access to any. You have uh, no locations. Like, so you got nothing. nothing. You have a house. Yes. So I was like, okay, I'm going to put him on house arrest. Um, and that's kind of how that started. Smart. Um, the Kevin and, Smith approach. Yeah. What do you have? Work with that. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how it came about. And then I came down and met most people online or through Dimitri, um, who cast the movie and mm-hmm. met a ton of people through him, which really helped. Um, if I was like, dude, we need to fill this role like next week. And he was like, all right, I'll, I'll take care of it. Right. Um, so she's so the best. Yeah. I mean, you, I was telling this to, uh, Frank, when we were doing the interview at the premiere, I was like, you have to find your Dimitri and Bob. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's you true. You have to find them. <laughs> You ha- if you're going to make a movie, you need to find the two guys who are willing to, like, work 24 hours a day, like, in the blazing hot sun and never complain. Just, like, do it. Sure. 
and th- they're just invaluable to they're the process th- for sure. So after I found them, it was it was ridiculously easier. Uh, if I didn't find them, like I don't know what would have happened. Sure, sure. The Dimitri's great. Yeah, Dimitri. I I attribute Dimitri to like everything I've done. Uh, yeah, because he cast me. So he like I met him through Alibi Boys. Met Bobby through there. Then he got me auditions for things. I worked on Smothered by Mothers with Brian Herzlinger, who I'm a huge fan of, yep. through Dimitri. I got casted in this by Dimitri and you, you know. Um, so when it came to casting, mm-hmm. you got to get roles. You have your characters. Um, I, I I know you're friends with the owner of Buffalo Chips, mm-hmm. his family friend. Yeah. So you decided to have a casting call. Yeah. That was the only business that I s- – I didn't really have access to it, but I right. like, kind of begged the owner to let me do it. Yeah, you had a couple hours to where – before they opened to uh, right. do a thing. For right. Sure. Um, so how – How did that go? What's 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 going on? You put – Dimitri put out a thing. There's going to be a casting call for a feature. Yep. It's the day of. Yeah, well, I think that it, the reason that the casting call was so successful is just because there's nothing happening here. Sure. The Southwest Florida is very, bit, very right. good, especially creatively. Right. So even though it wasn't for any money, which I thought was going to be a huge thing, like I thought, I thought people would be like, no money, like no, that's a not feature good. unpaid, yeah, right. But it really like it really took off more than I realized it would. How many people would you say showed up? I think like roughly fifteen to twenty. That's crazy. And we had two casting calls, um, but. It just went great. I mean, a lot of people who showed up first, like we cast in the movie, Alex sh- was one of the first person. You were one of the first person. I think you Danny, were the first. I was, yeah, well, technically, Alex got there before me, but yeah. she stayed in her car. I was yeah. the first person to walk in. Right. Um, and, you know, Danny was there with us the whole time. So he was kind of like helping us with the casting call. Then he ended up uh, going last. But it was just like, it was really weird. We found yeah. a lot of people in that one. Um and then cast a few people in the second casting call. But it went great. I mean, it, I loved it. Were I the, didn't think it would go that well. Yeah, you had a lot of people show up. Yeah. And then it was, I think it was like two weeks or so afterwards when you started contacting people, letting them know you got the role. Yeah. Um. So, all right, first day on set was uh in Dimitri's house. Yep. In the room. Yep. With me and no pants. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What uh? What's going through your head the day of, you're like, today's the day, we're starting. Yeah. Day one. I thought day one, I really wasn't worried about that much because it was such an easy thing. Yeah, it was like four lines. Yeah. So, like, I think day one was, like, probably one of the easiest days that we had. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, day one was, was a breeze, but not for you. Day yeah, one yeah was, day one was awful for yeah. me. Because <laughs> I didn't know you. Right. You know, I do. I met you at the casting call, but that was it. Right. And I knew Dimitri. I knew Dimitri a bit, and Bobby. But then it was like I mean, it was super stressful for me. I was like, oh my god, it's a movie, it's a feature, and day yeah. one, if I'm bad, they can recast me because it won't need reshoots. <laughs> uh, no, so that was good. Um, what was the hardest day on set? The day on set? Um, like, what was the day when you're like, God, this is one of those 100% days? Hundred percent where we filmed downtown. Yeah, the last day. 100 percent that was the hardest day yeah i was like super tired i'm looking back <laughs> at the behind the scenes footage and i'm like man i look like i want to kill someone like You're, I yeah am, this is a little little ag- agitation going yeah on. <laughs> i was like dying because like and it was super hot yeah i mean first of all we woke up at like what four and then went yeah. downtown because we didn't want like there to be a ton of people around all right um and we get there we were pretty well prepared granted we get there and like it was just getting hotter and very, hotter very and hot. hotter throughout the day. I couldn't imagine how Nathan felt. So say, and you made Nathan run around. Yeah. <laughs> I had like the stupid mic on top of my camera that like kept falling off and like <laughs> oh my gosh, like, like that was just one thing that really bothered me. Sure. Um I'm like this is already bad enough. Like I don't want there to be a huge shotgun mic on top of my camera right now. Um and we did that to like not have if Bobby was holding the boom pole he would have been like super noticeable and like sure everyone would have been like looking at us and I just wanted to keep it like as discreet and as quick as possible for sure um and I felt like I couldn't direct I felt like 
I was too focused on the shot, just trying to get the shots and then get out of there. Sure. So I feel like I didn't have time to direct. That was one of the biggest things on this movie. One of my biggest regrets is not having a cinematographer. I was actually going to say that must have been the most difficult. A hundred percent. You're not, because you, those are two very different jobs. Yep. They're setting up the shot, making sure you're getting everything, but then also you're not watching the performance when you're watching the shot. Right. Because you, you can't. Right. You know? I, I think we I got the imagine. best performances when, I, when the camera's on a tripod or when I wasn't handing the camera, which wasn't that often, but like when the cameras on a tripod i felt like we got such great i agree stuff. well there's more direction those yeah. days you know where you, you i got to watch it i got like to sit down different. and do that for sure like so i remember you're like do this different do that don't do this like you and that is how you sculpt the performance right you know otherwise you're like this looks really good like i got the shot but then the actor's just not delivering the line the way you wanted right to. so some days i wouldn't really give that much direction sure um i don't know if it's for better or for worse but like sometimes when I'm just doing handheld all day, I'm like, I'm not giving enough direction. Sure. And I felt like that a lot. So that's one of the biggest things that I had with this movie is next time I'm getting a cinematographer, a hundred percent. Sure. I think that's like a super important role. Um, Absolutely. It still worked though. With, uh, to your credit, uh, we were very well prepared going into the shot. That's true. You know, that was the other thing. Like you weren't just like, ah, I figured it out. Like we knew what we were doing and we asked a lot of questions. Right. You know, and then there were times when you would just give a little bit of direction to get something slightly different, and they'd yeah. be like, oh, "Okay, cool, that works." So we were definitely able to sit down and talk about the scene before we started shooting. Absolutely, that was really helpful. You're right. Absolutely, like we knew what to do when the camera was rolling, and we got to do less takes that way, and it'd be quicker. For sure. Yeah. For sure. It worked. Yeah. It worked rather well. Absolutely. So shot it. That was that was the last day on set, mm -hmm. which was nuts. Yeah, I feel so bad for Nathan. Mm -hmm. That was actually one of my favorite days on set because I just sat in an AC car with <laughs> Alex because <laughs> I filmed almost no scenes with Alex in the movie. Right. Uh, besides, like, you know, her one bit, like, her talking and I'm there and whatever. Right. Uh, but this scene, which is the opening scene and in the trailer, so I'm allowed to talk about it. Yep. Uh, we just, like, hung out while you're <laughs> driving around and making Nathan run up and down this, this parking garage. Yep. Uh, it was pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Um. I want to talk about certain things, but we can't. I know. That's what that was be like. Carly did a great job, yeah. but you can't really talk about anything she did. Nope. Um, no, but dude, this was this was good. Yeah. This was good. So you have you have uh, a showing in Virginia coming up. Mm -hmm. When is that? Where is that? So that's July twenty first. Mm -hmm. um, I'll make sure this is up by then. Nine p.m. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, nine p.m. July 21st. Yeah, we're going to do, like, the, the backdrop thing so people can take pictures against it, which would be cool. Sweet. Um, and this will be in Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. It's at um, Movie Land at Boulevard Square. My friend works there. He's a manager. That's going to be cool. Dude, when you see Nate, you'll see him. He's got a massive beard. Yeah. He's also a cabbage merchant. That's really? how we met. Yeah. That's cabbage awesome. bros. So. I have to talk to him anyways. I have to. So. Yeah. Yeah. He's <laughs> great. Cool. He's a great awesome. dude. Um. So that's in Virginia. You have that. There's a showing, 9 p.m. Yep. Tickets are available. Yep. The movie right now is available for pre-order. Oh, you can buy the movie for pre-order. Blu-ray. What, what? DVD. What? T-shirts, posters. That's what I'm talking and about. And if you pre-order, you get them signed. Do we really? We have the signed stuff? Yeah, dude. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I don't know if you'll get to sign them because, like... I mean, I'm in the movie, so yeah, I better get to sign I'll them or something. Them out. Whatever. But, uh, <laughs> I will definitely sign them. Oh, um, uh, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And I'll throw in some free stickers, probably. Stickers are cool. Free, people who pre-order are going to get, like... A swag bag. Yes. So like, like premium stuff. Right, yeah. Like, You're going to get magnets you didn't even know you wanted. Exactly. <laughs> um, so... And then what's after What's after that? I know you have another showing in Pennsylvania. So yes. I'm looking at doing... Well, after this showing, mm -hmm. people were like, we have to show this more places. And people were well, like, yeah. I know a guy here, I know a guy here. Um, so there's talk of doing one in Naples. There better be one in Naples. You know, upstate saying. New York. We can sell in Naples. Yeah. So, plus, I think that would make it easier if, to do, like, a cast party like we've been wanting to do. For sure. Because we didn't even do a rap party. Well, I so, mean, my car got stolen, so. Yeah. That was, cool. <laughs> that was really fun. We can talk about that if you want to. Uh, okay. So, we'll talk about it. Here's what happened. Um, it, it made it really fun, though. It was a pretty fun night. Yeah. Yeah. No, I had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> You got to see a slightly agitated Brian. Um, so we filmed this movie at a house in Fort Myers. I had worked the night before, as always. Um, I went to sleep at 6 a.m. after work. I got up at 7 a.m. because I had to drive four hours to Orlando. I uh, talked to Chris, and 
asked him if I could park my car at the tethered house because I knew we were coming back there for the rap party. He said that was fine. So I got into Fort Myers. I pulled into the house, supposedly. Drove out, left. Drove four hours to Orlando. Went to the premiere. It was great. Had an amazing experience. Caught a ride back with Bobby. And, I mean, it was a bit... He didn't drive through the middle of the state. He took the interstate, so it took a little longer. Mm -hmm. Bobby. Uh, Thanks for the ride. And (laughs) so we got here at, I want to say, about 9 or so. 9, 9.30. That sounds right. Um, And I realized my car is not in the driveway. And I'm I'm quite confused. (laughs) Because... I drive a 2000 Kia Sportage that has been, uh, it's seen some things. Mm-hmm. It's not the prettiest car in the world. It's, t- it's, t- it's a tough little guy. I, and I mean, the neighborhood. The neighborhood's very nice. It's a very nice neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so I knew nobody stole it because it's not a nice car. I paid two grand, 2300 for it. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to get even that. It's not worth the problem right. to steal my car. I've got decals on the back, so it's very recognizable. <laughs> you're not getting away, man. My mirror fell off. Like, please. <laughs> This this not get stolen. So I started thinking it got towed. Had to have been towed. Um, so we look around. There's nothing. We drive down the street to see if I maybe parked it in another house. Don't see it. So I call the cops and I'm like, hey, did my car get towed? What's going on? And the story's gonna get boring, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I called them. They said, yeah, your car was towed by this company. They gave me the number. Called the company. The company. I don't know if it was legal what they did. Um, but they're old, so they totally don't listen to this. They gave me the number to the person who called and got my car towed, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which was great for me because otherwise I would have been in a lot of a lot of trouble. Yeah, because I had to work that night as well. Um, so we end up fi- getting the number. I I left a, a an agitated voicemail. Yeah, but not like I wasn't mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. But I was definitely going to continue calling until they answered my phone. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I said as much. Yeah. Um. So. Two calls later, they answer, and um, come to find out, I'd parked it next door <laughs> at uh, at their house. They have a car in their garage that they could not get out, so they had my car towed, um, which <laughs> which I immediately apologized for. Yeah. Uh, and um, I got it. I got my car back, and then we we <laughs> the the unofficial rap party started at eleven thirty p.m. <laughs> <laughs> We uh we ended at about one, and then I went and I did my job, and then I am here now. Yeah, <laughs> that was good time. It was uh, it's a good story. It wasn't it wasn't stolen though. Yeah, it wasn't stolen. Yeah, it was not stolen. It was towed because uh I parked it in the wrong house. <laughs> yeah, hey man, it happens, man. <laughs> and I you, if you were there, I could have swore to this day I could have swore I I had parked it at the house. Yeah, you like, said I was like I was not. I'm ninety percent sure that I I I still am. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I know it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> Because I remember I asked her, I was like, why'd you have my car towed? She goes, because it was in my house. I was like, it was not. She's like, it was. And then I gave this address. So like, no, she gave her address. And I was like, yeah, well, what's it look like? <laughs> and she told me exactly what my car looked like. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a pause. And I was like, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't believe you, but yeah, yeah. you had all the details. You so. handled it well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do things like that sometimes. <laughs> I handle things well. Yeah. Um. So that was the the... The the end of my tethered adventure. Yeah, <laughs> it was a good ending. Yeah, yeah, it was good. But you made a movie, which is pretty great. It was shown in theaters. People loved it. Yeah, you're gonna show it some more. Absolutely. It's going to be available online eventually. Yes. Um, the release date's a little iffy right now because we got an offer from uh, our good friend Bishop. Yep. To do some mastering, mastering for the audio which would be like insanely awesome mm-hmm. um so i think i'm gonna take him up on that and we're gonna do that and maybe push the release date a little bit farther back but like i said pre-orders are are available and i think that you know i think you'll be thankful that you pre-ordered it if you do for sure when you when you get your swag you get your swag bag yeah cool cool and uh what are what are the plans what are your, what are your plans after it's out on dvd and stuff they'll be able to buy it obviously mm-hmm. um are you can tour the movie some more is it gonna be on netflix it's gonna be uh dude i'd love it to be on netflix i love netflix and i love everything to do they're doing uh-huh. um i'd love to just make movies for netflix for well, like ever dude yeah <laughs> i mean just make original movies it's for best them. of the best content right yeah. now um what do you know what it takes to get on netflix 
I don't. I assume you have to be really good at making movies. Okay. So uh, I guess already, I just got to get better. So let's at say you're movies. already halfway there. Yeah, I just got to <laughs> get a little bit better, and uh, maybe I'll make some. Um, but after I'm looking, I'm th- thinking about this crazy idea where I make a feature film in 30 days. Um, that is insane. Going from writing the script to releasing the movie. That is even more insane. So 30 days. Yeah. Where so did you come up with this idea? Well. I mean, why, why do you hate yourself that much? <laughs> well, no. See, what I'm, first of all, it sounds awesome. Dude. I mean. T- in, listen to this. 24-7, theory. 30 days, nothing but making a movie and getting paid to do it. Okay. So the last part sounds pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. Like, that is crazy. That sounds really fun to me, first of all. It sounds like a lot of hard work, but I'm used to that. So it's all good. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, so, I, I, you know, coming out of this movie, I'm like, dude, this took too long. Like at the bit. end of the day, it took a bit, but with scheduling and everything, like yeah, I mean, with, with no budget, it's not easy. Absolutely. Um, and when you're working on by yourself, it's not easy. But For sure. at the end of the day, like I feel like it took too long to make. I feel okay. like it, I feel like from writing it to releasing it, it just took too long. So I was like, going into the second movie, I don't now. I'm gonna be looking at it differently. I'm gonna be looking at it as like this is gonna be two years of my life. You know, I need to make sure that this is like the right thing that I need to do. And I don't want that to discourage me from just going in and making something, which is what I do with Tethered. Sure. Um, so if I'm like, if I give myself a limit of 30 days and tell everyone that they're going to see the movie in 30 days, but I haven't even written it yet, like that is, everyone's expecting it in 30 days. That I is have to. The there's, ballsiest thing I've ever heard. So there's no, there's nothing that I can do. Sure. At that point, I have to show in 30 days. There's no excuses. I can't just be like, oh, no, I don't. like that's it. It's, sure. You're making it in 30 days. That's it. Plain and simple. Right. So, you know, that's kind of like what I'm thinking. That's kind of an idea that I have floating around. If I do decide to do that, it'll probably be like really spur of the moment. I'll be like, OK, I got some funding. We're going to do this next month. It'll be like, sure, we're just going to jump in and do it. Um, you better film it, like do some sort of that's what I'm saying. I'm it. thinking about having like a documentary crew follow the whole for the whole thing around for 30 days. Um, and then, you know, later on coming out with the documentary of how we did it. Sure. Um, so that that's an idea. Crazy. We'll see if it happens, but, um, you know, if you've got some money, let me know. Yeah. Right. If you, you want to invest in a movie, let me know. Make this happen. Yeah. Uh, but that'd be so cool. So that's what you're looking at doing. Yeah. That's your next project. That's what I'm thinking. That's pretty cool. It's crazy. That's pretty cool. Can I be in it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> of course. Dude, that is awesome. Well, we are actually at an hour 10, which is fantastic. Perfect. See, I don't know how th- this works out pretty well. When we get like good conversations, they always feel like short. Uh, like, yeah, they feel short. And at like an hour, you're like, yeah, that yeah, feels good. good. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. In that, thank you so much personally for everything because I have changed my life. Thank you. Maybe man. like a I tiny mean, movie, but it really, really did. Yeah, but like, look at all like everyone's saying that. But look at you as an actor. Like, look what you put into it. True. You do you realize how much like trust you had to put into me to like do that to but come also, every single weekend? True, but also it was it was trust, but also like put a lot of weight on you. Right. Because on set, I told you I was like, if I suck, it's your fault. Right. You know, which isn't right, but it's it, true. You know, because I because you remember after every single take, I was like, good, bad, more, less. Like, right. what do you want? I'll give you what you want, but you need to ask for it. Right. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it really did. Like, this meant the world. And uh, uh, it changed how I look at myself. I mean, because you can say, like, me as an actor, sure, but I didn't know that until you put me in a movie and showed it to me. Right. You know, so that's in, invaluable. Changed my life. I'm incredibly thankful. I'm just glad you liked it, man. For everything. I loved it. I'm that so was great. Glad. I so, was terrified. <laughs> all right. I, know. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. So thank you. Um, where can people find you online? Um, just follow me on every social media at Lynchpin Films. Lynchpin Films. Yeah. Awesome. I follow Brian too, so like you can find yeah, me talking to you'll him. You'll find me. There. I retweet and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I talk to him all the time on there, so you'll find me. He um, does. We're buds. But yeah. Cool. Lynchpin Films. Do you have uh, a website, YouTube, Lynchpin Films, all that? Lynchpinfilms.com. Um, but to pre-order the movie, you go to tetheredthemovie.org. Sweet. Sweet. Um, and that's where you find everything. Trailer, merchandise, cast, stuff, all that. Sweet. Yeah, well, man. good luck. 
on future things. That 30 day thing sounds <laughs> insane. Well, you're going to be a part of it. So I hope I, you get ready. I'm so for it. Yeah. You let me know. Good. I will do whatever you need. Good. And that is where we're going to end it. Do you want to push the button? Yeah, I do. It's that one right there. Thank you.